Hello, everybody, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Dani, and today Crate.com talks with Terry Foreman, the executive director at First Graduate. If you haven't heard of it yet, its mission is to help students become the first in their families to graduate from college, ready to pursue careers that are meaningful to them. Before we begin, remember to press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app. Hi, Terry, and welcome. Hello, Danielle. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. Uh, I always, I, I feel like I've always said this, but every time that we talk about education, it's something that is really important to me and that I'm always happy to hear about new and different initiatives to help, like, uh, fill the gaps that the system still has, right? But before we go there, I very much like to know about you, about your story. How did you begin working in this? <laughs> Well, I've been working with nonprofit organizations almost my entire career. And um, I, I guess I was motivated because um, uh, when I was a kid, when I was 10 years old, we were, I grew up in Central and South America. And actually, we arrived in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro. And I could see how beautiful it was. And I saw the, the mountains. And then I looked closer and I could see what I learned were called favelas and the people walking up and down and realizing what these homes were made of. And at the same time, right below that was this incredible resort area um, in Rio. And I just, something clicked for me. Um, and I just thought it doesn't make sense that things are this different for people. Um, and so I wanted to write about it and I wanted to do something about it. And so I studied journalism and um, television and eventually wound up working for nonprofit organizations. Wow, that's that's really touching. Thank you so much for sharing with, me, <laughs> with us. <laughs> and well, as a Brazilian, I fully understand what you're saying. It's 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 really hurtful to see the difference, right? Because it's it's almost palpable. You can feel it with your hands. It's it's insane. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And and now just trying to move to the context that you're facing now, I've got to say yeah. that I'm always, always baffled about the little I know about the United States. Because of my ignorance, I would not associate San Francisco with this sort of gap that you're trying to, to bridge. This sure. is insane. Could you, could you enlighten us a little bit more on this? Yeah, I mean, as you said, when people think of San Francisco, they think of technology and innovation and creativity and, you know, educated people. The fact is that in the San Francisco Unified School District, which is the public school system here, um, eight out of 10 students have parents who did not graduate from college many of whom, of whom did not graduate from high school either. And so for the families who are of means in this city with a college going tradition, um, they tend to send their, their children to independent schools or they have moved out of the city to find other schools for their, for their children. And so that just, um, uh, magnifies the disparity. And so what we have here really is um, an opportunity gap between those with a college going tradition and those who do not. And a lot of it also is driven by zip code, unfortunately. Um, this is a city of, it's a wonderful city, um, but it's, it is a city of extremes. And um, so what we are trying to do is to, um, create equity in our, in our education system to provide equal access to students. I mean, imagine if every child who wants one or whose family wants them to have one could have a college education. Think about the difference that that could make for that child, for their families, for their communities, and for the whole city. And, you know, our, our dream is to be able to, to serve more and more students um, here in San Francisco. Um, so that they all have an opportunity for an equitable education. Well, that that would be truly wonderful if you could help more and more people every day more. <laughs> but yeah, and maybe, I don't know if everybody that is listening to us can 
fully understand what we're talking about here because it's really a shift in life when you have a college degree, right? Especially if that's not a tradition in your family, right? It, it changes the perspective. It changes the, the possibilities that you see for yourself. Would you mind if we talk a little bit about the transformation that you've seen in the kids and their families before we dive into your, your activities? Yeah, I can share a, a, a story that just came our way, actually, from one of our uh, um, a graduate from our very first cohort. Um, he's, I've had the pleasure of, of knowing him for a long time. He actually um, was part of our staff for a while um, when he graduated from college. And then he went on to um, become an advisor at one of the independent schools to try and bring more students um, like him into that school. And now he's in graduate school. But we just interviewed him for our newsletter and he said, you know, one of the most, one of the simplest yet most dramatic differences for him, besides having access to these great careers in grad school and all of these things that he wants to accomplish for himself and his family is, he was sitting, watching one evening during the week, watching television with his daughters and relaxing with them. And it suddenly occurred to him that his parents never did that with him because they couldn't. They were working multiple jobs to make ends meet, to put food on the table, to keep a roof over, over his head. And he realized that it's such a, a difference in his lifestyle versus theirs. And it's all because he had access to a college education. Wow, I, I think that says it all. Absolutely, that says it all. And, and now, just so we can understand, what exactly does first graduation uh, sorry, first graduate does to help the kids? So we have a very holistic approach and we have a very long arc of working with our students. So we call it recruitment for lack of a better word, but we recruit them in sixth grade and we stay with them through college graduation and into their early careers. We also work with um, their families or caregivers to help them have the support they need to understand how to best help their, their, young, their youth to stay on this path and, and accomplish their dream. And so we provide everything for these children, these youth that a college going, uh, that a family with a college going tradition would provide for their students. So. Um, it's everything from um, tutoring, uh, college, uh, sorry, after school homework, um, mentoring. We provide career exposure from the earliest ages. Uh, we visit companies. We have panels of, of um, employees of those companies talk to our students about what they studied, how they got there, usually first generation students themselves. Um, we help uh, with the high school application process because in San Francisco, you have to apply to high schools, which is unusual. <laughs> we also help students every step of the way under learning about colleges with their and their college applications. We help their families complete the financial aid forms, FAFSA forms. Uh, we help them find scholarships. We also help um, students find paid internships in high school and in college. And we partner with a lot of other organizations to make that happen and a lot of our partner companies as well. One of the big, one of the big issues is um, frequently students will have to make a decision about accepting a paid job in a service industry, not that there's anything wrong with that, but they might have a choice between, you know, flipping burgers to make money over the summer versus accepting an unpaid internship in, in their career field. And they have to help their, their families um, economically. And so then they become dis even more disadvantaged with their peers because they haven't had those internships, which help move them forward and make them better job candidates. And so that's why we're working very hard to develop um, paid internships um, for them. Um, and then we have, we have um, some programs that help our students when they're in college. 
We have a year-long mentorship program called Coach 3.0, which helps our students maintain at least a, a 3.0 average and also provides um, social and emotional support. And then we have a program called Launchpad that we've um, created in partnership with Deloitte. Actually, they, they brought the idea to us. Um, and that is for our college seniors and, and recent alums that helps them um, search for interview for negotiate salaries and move into um, early stage careers. So it could be from college to career or from their first job, first career to their second one. Um, and uh, again, it's we bring in volunteers from from different walks of life who can help them with all of those things from LinkedIn profiles to resumes to interview styles, um, all of those things. Wow, it's it's incredible. It's it's such a huge structure that you need to maintain there. I'm I'm really shocked, and I kept thinking about the impact that it, it must have, especially on families, because it's not just you know, of course, it's immense to help the child, to help the student, but to have this family engagement on it as well and help them to solve solve their doubts, you know, uh, and face their fears going forward. That's that's truly amazing. It is truly life transforming. I'm well, congratulations. I got to say this to you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we, we see um, a college education is the, the best way to move a family um, out of poverty in a single generation. Well, and I, I just agree with you. There is nothing I could even add to that. I, I you mentioned Brazilian reality and it is it is just what I see here as well. You know, in different shapes, but at the end of the day, it's the way out. Education is always the best way out. Uh, just a quick pause here to tell people to go to your website, which is firstgraduate.org. You can get more information about them. You can get in touch with them if you want to. I'm going to ask you a, a little bit about this recruitment process. But if anyone that is listening to us right now is just <coughs> interested in how it works, do go there. You can check it out. You can truly get in touch so easy with them and learn about their values, which I, I thought was just amazing. Uh, but now about the recruitment, how does that process yeah. work? Do you profile the students? Do you partner, with, make partnerships with public schools? How that happen? Yeah, so we are currently we are embedded uh, in two middle schools in San Francisco, um, they, we identified schools that were um, underperforming and decided that that's where we could have a, a deep impact and create sort of a halo effect for those schools. And so we work with one school in the Mission District and one school in the Excelsior District of San Francisco. And our staff, uh, actually all of our staff is involved in the recruitment process. We go and we speak to every, every sixth grade classroom and uh, talk to the, the students. We show a video about our program and we have application forms. And then um, the students apply. They, they, they fill out a written application. Their parents also uh, fill out a written application. They get a letter of recommendation from um, a math teacher and an English teacher. And then we interview them, uh, the students and the parents. I mean, during the pandemic, it was kind of fun because we did it virtually and we interviewed the students and the parents together. And it was just such a sweet interaction between the two. Um, and then from there, we, we select a cohort of students um, to start with us. And then they stay with us throughout the until they graduate from college, hopefully. Wow, I, I, I love to hear about this. And it, it must be a very interesting dynamic to <laughs> have them both in, <laughs> in yeah, the same well, video call. It, it's very, very sweet. And a lot of times the parents don't speak English. And so mm -hmm. the student is either interpreting or we have staff that speak different languages. That, so we participate in that way. Okay. But I, I'm amazed about how thorough the process is. Really, you try to take into consideration so many things and it, it really kind of brings out the side of uh, it being student oriented, right? It's more it's, so connected to them. It's not like top down. It's really right. trying to bring them as inputs as well. Very much so. And we, we always 
uh, we're always monitoring what we're doing. We survey after every program. Um, we we want to meet our students where they are and, and meet their needs, and we listen to what their needs are. Um, so two things. I just remembered what I was going to say a minute ago. Um, the other thing that's important to know about FIRST Graduate that differentiates us in another way from other similar type organizations is that we take students that are in the middle. Right? We're, we don't take straight A students because they get help in other places. We don't take the, the students who need special remedial help. That, that's not our area of expertise. But we take average students who are driven and who can see what this can do for them. And, and they're motivated and their parents are motivated to keep them engaged. Um, so that's, that also describes the, the students that we work with. Yeah, well, and that's good to hear. I've got to say, I'm sorry <laughs> if I interrupted you, but that's, <laughs> that's just wonderful that's to hear because I, I have the, the feeling that most times the students kind of felt this hopelessness of, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm never going to get a scholarship. I'm never going to get the help I need. And if you just take like the, A's, the straight A's to, you know, help out, really going to leave a, a good mess, let's say, behind because they don't feel that they're good enough. So right. it's wonderful. And and we've seen such amazing, amazing accomplishments by by our students, by our by our alums. Um, it's it's just wonderful. That's great. Yeah. And well, if you're listening to us right now, and um, it's intrigued and want to know more about how is that feeling? How do they do, do the kids like? How does that happen? Go to their YouTube page. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was watching before the interview. I think you had like a graduation ceremony something like this uploaded and the feeling is just amazing and you truly get to understand how meaningful this is for the families and for the kids so i i do tell people to get in touch and and, and go to your youtube page to see how it feels like i think it's very very easy to understand uh the good that you're doing through those videos honestly thank you <laughs> thank you and our students tell their own stories we don't put words in their mouth um they are dynamic and articulate and smart. Yeah. Again, right. this can be easily spotted on the videos. It's <laughs> like there is no way. <laughs> there is no way it's different than that. <laughs> Terry, looking at all of this, and still I'm trying to figure out the size of the structure they need to manage there. I got to ask you, how is the best way for people to help you keep going? Because it must require like a volume of of effort you know financial and you know and practical yeah so i think financial support is the key because we do want to grow um we are place-based here in san francisco there's a lot more that we want to do here before we can think about moving anywhere else or adding adding more places um and we're we're a relatively small team there are 13 of us and um, there are things that we want to do. We, we completed a strategic planning process um, last year that we're moving forward. And um, again, we, we want to be able to serve more students because the need is so great. And so financial support is really key. We also um, welcome volunteers and people can sign up uh, for that on our site. And volunteers do everything from college essay coaching to mentoring to helping with tutoring to participating as um, career experts in different, in different areas. So there, there's a lot that can be done there as well. Um, but, you know, the needs are always changing. And certainly during the last couple of years with the pandemic, again, going back to listening to our students' needs, it became apparent very early on that our students who now had to do their education and their work with us, extra work, virtually, many of them did not have access to technology at home. And so thanks to support from donors, we were able to purchase laptops, and hotspots and bring them to the students so that they could keep up and um, and stay connected. And so that was huge and it was something, you know, we hadn't planned to do. 
Um, but we're doing it now and we recognize that need. And so we're always on the, on the lookout for, for laptops and hotspots so that we can make sure that as we bring in new cohorts that, you know, ideally we'd be able to give every, every student a laptop and that would, that would be fabulous. So then they wouldn't have to worry about that, right? Just one initial barrier out of the way, (laughs) um, and let them focus on learning and, and, um, you know, starting their futures absolutely just growing right it's yeah it's important exactly. to have room to grow yeah and exactly. i absolutely encourage people again to donate to get in touch if you're in san francisco see if there's anything that you can do and you know help them out if you're not donations as terry said are absolutely welcome it doesn't have to be a lot a dollar goes a long way right Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, the the money goes to, um, well, our staff is our program. So yes, it does go to salaries. And that's so important. Uh, Without our staff, there would be no program. (laughs) Uh, And our staff is amazing. We have an amazing team. We have, we also have nine interns right now, all of whom are also first generation college grads. Our our staff are are primarily first generation college grads. Um, a good percent of our board, more than more than half of our board are also first generation college grads and our associate board. Um, so it's very important that that our students have really positive role models who understand their experience and have been through it. And, you know, we listen to them. So another thing that 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 came up during the pandemic is students you know are getting disaffected because it's very hard to be online all day and then do more work in the evening and on top of homework and everything else and so students were asking for homework help for tutoring and we've now been able to provide those things and we continue to listen to what is it that you need right now to stay involved to stay connected to stay in school and to and to move forward and to get to college and so we we also take our students to visit colleges we have a trip planned in the spring to take um, students on a tour of um, colleges in southern california Uh, we we take them to visit schools up here in northern california and uh, we're talking about some other possibilities as well if we if we raise the resources to do it to be able to do flyouts to the uh, midwest and the east coast Um, Because our students do go to college all across the country. And um, so we want to, we, we help, we also help them select colleges based on a lot of factors. One is we, we want them to graduate with as low a debt load as possible, but we also want them to find the right fit um, so that they're comfortable on their campuses. Um, As first generation students, they're always first gen. And so it's important for them to understand how to how they can fit in, how they can advocate for themselves, um, and thrive wherever it is that they choose to go. Well, yeah, I, I completely agree. I think college is a wonderful experience, but it's a very delicate moment, right? Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Terry, for joining us. I loved, loved, loved talking to you today. And well, I, I do hope that you get uh, all the help you need to achieve those dreams. Thank you so very much, Danielle. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Likewise. And for everybody else listening also, thank you so much for joining us one more time. And remember, because if you enjoyed this episode, we got to spread the word. So remember to subscribe and like the episode on YouTube or in your podcast app, because that shows the algorithms that this is an important conversation and we can uh, raise the voice about the importance of the first graduate. Bye, and I'll see you at the next episode.